Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Today's episode is brought to you by the You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. Whether this is your first time listening to the podcast or you are an MVP and have listened from the start, come join us on Facebook. We have a secret free Facebook group. If you search groups in Facebook, you will find the You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. Over 1,400 incredible fascinating, helpful humans are there starting conversations, answering questions, helping each other out, and most of all, just making sure that we are all squeezing the most we can out of this one shot we have at our lives. So if you're feeling alone, you need a boost of motivation, or you just want to connect with like-minded people, go to Facebook, search groups, and search You're Not Getting Any Younger. We're there for you. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. It's the end of January 2020, and I am sending you a virtual high five, a virtual hug, a virtual whatever you need. We're entering into month two of the year, and that's not to scare you, that's not to freak you out, but it is to wake you up. What are you wasting time on? What are you procrastinating on? What are you holding yourself back from that maybe you didn't recover or get over from last year? Process it, work through it, understand it, take inventory on it, and then think about what you didn't do in January that you're going to do in February because you're not getting any younger. And this is the podcast to remind you of that. This week is a solo episode and the theme is how to be your own accountability buddy. So we spent a lot of time in the past month and just for a while on the show talking about goals, talking about deciding on what you want, what your purpose is, what matters to you, but none of that will come true. None of that will be a success if you do not learn how to hold yourself accountable. You know, we've all heard of accountability, buddy, but that's you relying on somebody else to show up for you. When are you going to show up for yourself and how are you going to learn to do that over and over and over again? to get what it is that you want to achieve, to do what it is that you want to get done. So let's talk about five ways that you can become your own accountability buddy, especially as we move into a new month of the year where maybe this month you will do something for yourself. You will do something for your to-do list. You will do something for your goals that you could end the month and say, wow, I am so proud of this, this, and this because I did it without the help of anybody else. So tip number one is to fully understand what it is you want and what your why is. When I started training for a half marathon last year, I didn't really have much of a why. It was something that my friend encouraged me to sign up for. I didn't really like running. So the first couple months of training for this were absolutely miserable. And then I started to see that my why wasn't accomplishing this half marathon. That was a goal way too far away to care about. But my why was that when I was running, even though it was painful and it was hard and it was scary and it was all these things, my why was that I was so excited to watch myself, my body, do something I didn't realize it could do, which is run a bunch of miles. And that why of enjoying that feeling of being impressed by myself was what got me out of bed at 5 a.m. on a Saturday when it was 90 degrees out to run 10 miles. So I ask yourself, for the things you want to do in February, for the things you want to get done, what is your why? Now, for some of you, that's going on more job interviews. For others of you, it's posing the question to your boss about a raise. Now, some of you, it's starting to write the book or starting your own podcast or launching your own website. But what is the why? You are driven by reasons. You are held accountable by motivating things. And sometimes those things aren't always rewards, though sometimes they are, and we'll talk about that. But sometimes it's just because you have this deep purpose, this sense of self, this 
this thing that you want to do because it makes you feel so good. So what is your why? Now, it might be hard to figure that out and it might not be so obvious. Let's say it is that you want to start a podcast. You might have a million whys. But what is the thing that is driving you to do this? Maybe it's because you want to prove that you can. Maybe it's because you know you can and you're just so sick of putting it off. Or maybe your why is that you have access to knowledge that you know if it changed even one person's life, that would be so incredible to you. What is your why? Maybe you're after a new job. Why do you want that job so badly? And sure, it's the money, it's the safety, it's the security, but, but really, what is that why? So as you're brainstorming your whys, push yourself because the, the couple of reasons you first write down might not even be your real truth. Push yourself to write down your why and fully confess what is driving you to do this. Now, by the way, you might have to do some things that you don't actually really want to do, you're not passionate about. So maybe your why is more of something that is something that you have to do because you know it's going to make your life different or better. But no matter what it is, once you understand your why, that awful task is going to be something that makes it feel a little bit better. Another thing that's on my goal to-do list, I signed up for a February yoga challenge, which is four no, three yoga lessons a week for the four weeks. And I'm not very good at yoga. I, li- I want to like yoga, but a challenge like this is tough for me. So the reason why I am doing this is because something in me knows that when I do these yoga classes, I end up changing my mood and my attitude. So my why for showing up three times a week to these hour-long classes that are really hard, really tough on my body is that I know that I enjoy the feeling afterward, and that is my why. And if I don't get that feeling afterward by not doing yoga, by sitting on the couch, I know I feel guilty and miserable. Number two is map out your realistic time. So when we're trying to keep ourselves accountable, oftentimes we don't actually look at our schedule, look at our calendar. We don't even know how much time we have to do what we want to do. So then it falls through the cracks or we don't show up for it because we don't have time for it. So as you're plotting out how you're going to keep yourself accountable for a goal or a task, first track your time. Look at your calendar. Make yourself realistically understand how much time you can budget to it now and perhaps what you have to move around and change to budget more time for it. And once you do that, you'll be able to approach it in a more realistic way. So if you look at your schedule this week and you realize you only have about two hours throughout the whole week to devote to this goal, well, at least you can make yourself accountable for those two hours rather than trying to make up five, 10, 16 hours to put towards something that you know you don't have. You will feel more accountable when A, you understand how long a task will take and B, when you budget that much time that you have and only what you have to really really put forward into that goal. Number three, what could you look forward to as a reward? And I say reward and people are thinking, oh man, is that me buying myself a Tiffany's bracelet? Is that me taking myself out to dinner? No, rewards can be free. They can simply just be a list of things that you enjoy that you want to use as rewards for keeping yourself accountable. For example, you might say to yourself, if I do these three tasks today, my reward of the day is that I get to take a 20 minute nap. And if I don't do these tasks and I don't finish on time, then you can take that nap. Or maybe it's that you say, okay, if I do these tasks, then on Friday, I'm going to end work an hour early and I'm going to do whatever I want during that one hour because I kept myself accountable. So rewards don't have to be big ticket items you buy yourself or even anything you spend money on, but they should be things you enjoy, you look forward to, you want, things that you can motivate yourself with. That way you can assign tasks, accountability with a reward. Number four. How can you kick off starting what you have to do as your own cheerleader? You know, oftentimes when we're holding ourselves accountable, we put so much pressure and stress on ourselves. We're mean to ourselves. But how can you enter that thing you have to do as your own cheerleader? For example, 
on my to-do list, I try to do some sort of physical activity for 20 minutes every day. Sometimes that means at 9 p.m. I sit on the stationary bike and I pedal as slowly as I can just to get the 20 minutes in. But again, sometimes when I approach those 20 minutes, I'm miserable about it. And it's easier when you're miserable about something to not do it. So what I try to do is pump myself up. And this is gonna sound weird, but I'm gonna share it with you, is I have a song that I'll sing to myself. And the song is a little bit negative, but I'll sing like, there's nothing more I'd rather do less than do 20 minutes of a workout, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I know it's good for me. And I sing this song and you're probably like, Jen, that was so embarrassing that you shared that. But I promise you that is a real song I sing to myself every day. You can ask Goofy, she will verify for you that that is true. And again, that song makes me laugh because it's so geeky, but also it makes me feel like I'm a cheerleader. It puts me in the mode of cheering myself on before I have to do something. Again, shifting your mindset before you approach a task will allow you to do it and go through with it. Viewing it as something negative, something you have to do, something you're miserable about will give you every reason not to do it and you won't be accountable. Tip number five. Close it out by having check-ins. So every end of the week, whether it's a Friday or a Sunday, take 10 minutes and just observe the progress you made on that goal, what you didn't do, what you can change going forward. If we don't have these checkpoints, these check-ins, we're not able to keep up with ourselves. Life gets so busy, we have no clue what we're doing half of the time, we're in autopilot. So having these check-ins allows you to account for how much progress you made, what you might have to change in the future. So once a week, put on your calendar a 10 minute check-in. And you can make this fun. I do my check-ins with a bag of with a box of black and white cookies from Trader Joe's and I'll just munch on the cookies and I'll do my check-ins and it makes me excited to do that on Sunday nights because it allows me to see okay what kind of things I have to change moving forward what am I proud about how am I tracking how much progress I'm making here you're your own accountability buddy you're your own coach you're the leader of your own team check in with yourself Okay, these are five tips for you. You don't have to do all five of them, but hopefully they allow you to think about things a little bit different and start to prep yourself to be your own accountability buddy because in the end, you need to trust yourself more than anybody else and you need to show up for yourself. And if you can't do that, then you're gonna constantly rely on something else to help you do that. And you can burn out that way. It's not scalable that way. So maybe for this month, you choose one or two of those five things, you put them into place, you see how they go, and you see how much progress you make on the things you know you have to get done. Well, my friends, thanks for listening to this episode. If you like the show, and I hope that you do like the show, it would mean so much if you subscribe to the podcast. If you gave it a review, just scroll down on your phone, drop us five stars. If you want, leave a review. Also, come hang out with us in the secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. There's over 1,500 incredible human beings in that group waiting to say hello to you in a non-overwhelming kind of way. And if you're listening to the show and you think other people would like it, drop it in an email, send it to them, post it on social media, tag us at Jen Glance, at Any Younger. I'll retag it. And if you have questions, advice, comments, or hellos for me, drop me an email, jenglance at gmail.com. Now you go off and be your own accountability buddy, my friend. Until next time, all my love, Jen Glance. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glance.